Hey guys, Assalamualaikum. Welcome back to another virtual lecture. In this video, we're going to learn about probability. So you may have heard about probability before. So what is probability? Probability is basically the likelihood or the chance of something happening. In other words, how likely it is for something to happen. So when you talk about an event, an event could be anything. It could be an event whereby the day will be raining or not. Okay, so let's take that as an example. Say the event here is whether it will rain or not for the day. And how likely is it to rain? So this likelihood can range between being very low likelihood, or meaning it will not rain, okay? And it may stretch up, up to very high likelihood, meaning it will rain. Okay, and of course, they are also somewhere in between. In other words, when we talk about how likely something happens, we are actually not certain that it will happen or not. Okay, so that is why we're just saying it's the most likely outcome. If an event happens or occurs, such as that it will rain, therefore, it occurs. Okay, so we normally assign 100% or a 1 if the event does not occur or in this case it will not rain therefore we assign a 0 okay so anything in between ranges from 0 to 1 that is why when we calculate probability it will never be more than 1 and it will not be a negative number it will always be between 0 to 1 inclusively the more likely something happens it approaches 1. The less likely something happens, it approaches 0. So if there's a 50-50 or a 50% chance something happening, it's right in the middle. So if you have never learned about probability before or if you're a bit rusty, I suggest you revise back the topic in Chapter 5. Okay, so here's a picture or a sample of Chapter 5 from your ebook. Okay, so here you can see that what's the definition of probability and um, how to understand the concept, okay? So you can pinch your way in, you know. It's actually very friendly and very easy to use and to read the ebook. So all you have to do is just find some time, uh, allocate some time to studying the concepts. Once you have familiarized yourself with the concept of probability, then you can proceed into learning the topic um, for this course. So we will learn two types of probabilities, okay? The first is discrete probability distributions under Chapter 6, and the second is continuous probability distributions under Chapter 7. So we know what a probability is, which is the likelihood of something happening. Okay, so the next thing that we need to learn is probability distribution. Now, probability distribution is basically a list of all possible outcomes of an experiment and the probability of each of those outcomes. Now, since we're social science students, the sort of experiments that we conduct are normally associated with human behavior. Okay, so now let's give an example of an experiment. Say we're interested in throwing a dice. How many faces are there in a dice? Okay, there's one, there's two, three, four, five, and six, you know, the dice, okay? So what is the chance of us throwing a one? Okay, so all of this is basically the outcomes, lah, okay? The outcomes of throwing the dice, okay? So remember, throwing the dice is our experiment. These are the possible outcomes that we can get whenever we decide to throw the dice. So what is the chance of getting a one out of the six faces? One out of six. Okay, so this is the chance of getting a 1. What is the chance of getting a 2? See, you're throwing the dice now. What's the chance that 2 will pop up? The chance is also 1 out of 6. 3, same, 1 out of 6. To get the number 4 from the dice is also 1 out of 6. 5, 1 out of 6. And of course, to get number 6 is also the chance is 1 out of 6. Okay, so if you were to add all of this, we'll get 6 out of 6. In other words, 1, 100%. So this is basically the outcomes of throwing the dice. And what are these? These are basically the probability. Okay. Probability of what? These are basically the probability attached to each outcome. Okay. 
So the chance of getting a 1 is 1 out of 6. Okay? The chance of getting a 4, for instance, is also 1 out of 6. The chance of getting a 5 is 1 out of 6. And the chance of getting a 6 is also 1 out of 6. So this is called a probability distribution. Okay, what is it defined as again? A probability distribution is a list of all of the possible outcomes of an experiment and the probabilities attached to each one of those outcomes. Now, in our example here, the probabilities are equal. Okay, so does it always have to be equal? No. Okay, so it depends on the circumstances. Because here, the experiment I gave you just now was throwing a dice. So obviously, the probabilities are equal. So in the next example later, I'll show you the case where the probabilities are not equal. Now, from this probability distribution, we can see some major characteristics. Uh, number one, the probability of a particular outcome ranges between 0 and 1. Here, as I mentioned to you just now, probability means it's what is the likelihood of it happening. It hasn't happened yet. So now, the probability of getting a 3, for instance, is 1 out of 6. Once you throw the dice and you get a 3, it becomes a 1 because it actually happened. And the rest would be 0, 0, 0, 0, 0. Okay? Likewise, if you were to throw the dice, okay, the probability of getting a number 5 is also 1 out of 6. So the minute you throw the dice and you actually got a 5, it will be a 1 because it happened. The 5 happened, but the rest will be 0. Whatever it is, whenever you add the probabilities, it will come back to 1. Again, as you can see here, the outcomes are also mutually exclusive. What it means is if you throw the dice and you got a 2, it's a 2. It's not a 3, it's not a 4, it's not a 5. So now that you know what a probability distribution is, you can further divide it into two types, okay? So we will learn discrete probability distribution and continuous probability distribution. If you recall topic 1, Okay, which is under types of data, there are two types of data. One is qualitative data, and the other is quantitative data. So quantitative data is basically data that we can measure numerically. And it's further divided into two types, discrete quantitative data and continuous quantitative data. Now, why is that important? It's important because you need to know what kind of quantitative data that we're dealing with. Then only we will be able to identify the type of probability distributions that we're dealing with. So what it means is, if our data is a discrete data, which means it's a data that can only take certain values, then we're dealing with a discrete probability distribution. But if our data is continuous data, what it means is the data can take any value within a specified range, then our probability distribution is also a continuous probability distribution. So in this video, we're only going to be focusing on discrete probability distribution. Yeah, so I repeat, uh, what's a discrete probability distribution? It's basically a probability distribution that is based on discrete uh, random variables. All right, so what's important um, under discrete probability distribution here is simple. One is we need to know uh, what is the mean or average or the expected value of this distribution. And secondly, we want to know what is the variance. Um, and of course, once you know the variance, you can also know the standard deviation of this discrete probability distribution. The formulas are all written in the textbook. So what I'm going to do now is we're going to go straight to an example so that we can apply those formulas and we can try to understand what it means uh, to find the mean and variance of a discrete probability distribution. Let's take a look at this first example. The Salayang Municipal Council reported the following information for a sample of 250 customers on the number of hours cars are parked and the amount they are charged and then you're given this table, okay? The first question, convert this information on the number of hours cars are parked to a probability distribution. Is this a discrete or a continuous probability distribution? Secondly, they ask you to find the mean and the standard deviation of the number of hours cars are parked. And how long is a typical customer parked? And thirdly, they ask you to find the mean and standard deviation of the amount charged. 
Now, before we want to solve this problem, we need to define what is our random variable. Now, in this question, you actually have two random variables, okay? The first random variable is this, the number of hours cars are parked. So let's denote that as x. Our second random variable is the amount they are charged. Okay, you can also denote it as x or maybe some other alphabet, up to you. Okay, because the first question is convert this information to a probability distribution. Here, from this table, you can see there is no probability. That is why they asked you to find it. Okay, so let's go on and do the first uh, question. Okay, we need to convert first the information on the number of hours cars are parked. So as I mentioned to you before, let's define the random variable first. Okay, so let x be the number of hours cars are parked. So here I have cropped out the information that we're interested in, okay, which is the number of hours that we are at the cars are parked and its frequency. Okay, what it means here is 20 cars parked for one hour, 38 cars parked for two hours, and so on and so forth. So altogether there are 250 customers or people parked. Okay, so how can we get the probability? It's very simple. What we need to do is to get the So how to calculate the probability of a person parked for one hour? Very simple. We just take the frequency or the number of people who parked their cars for one hour, and then we divide it by the total number of cars that are parked. So 20 over 250, we will get 0 0.08. So that's basically the first probability. Okay, so here, as you can see, this is how we got the probability. All right? Let me just put it down here so you can see it. There. All right, so you can uh, pause the video and try to calculate the probabilities for the rest of the number of hours cars are parked. So here's what you should get. Now remember the characteristics of a probability distribution? For each and every one of the outcomes, the probability ranges from 0 to 1, right? 0 to 1. It shall not be more than 1 but it shall be positive numbers only. It cannot be below zero. And the second characteristics, if you were to add all of these probabilities, we will get one, right? So is this a discrete or a continuous probability distribution? So uh, since we are learning a discrete probability distribution, obviously the answer is this is a discrete probability distribution. But some students may get confused because we're talking about hours. Normally, when we say hours, it's continuous. But as you can see here, the, uh, the hours are broken into blocks. We can see it as a discrete um, variable, okay? Now, let's look at the second question. The second question is to find the mean and the standard deviation of the number of hours cars apart. First things first, write down the formula. Okay, so again, please refer to the textbook to get all these formulas. In your textbook, they put here as Px. Here, I've written it down as F. It's similar, okay? So you can just change it to write it as P, okay? What is mu? Mu here is the mean or the expected value. X here is basically our random variable just now, okay? What is it? One, two, three, four, five, until eight, okay? One hour, two hours, three hours, cars are parked. Remember, X is the number of hours the cars are parked. Px or fx here is the probability that we just calculated before. So what we need to do is, for each x, we need to multiply with its probability. Then we just add it all up, okay? So this is basically what we're doing, okay? The number of hours cars are parked is one hour, and here's the probability. Okay, we can just write it down the other way. Okay, we can write it as 1 times 0 0.08, or here I wrote it as 0 0.08 first. It doesn't matter, okay? So why don't you pause the video and try to calculate that? So you will get... 4.144. So they ask you, how long is a typical customer parked? In other words, they're asking you to interpret this. We can say that typically a customer is parked for about four hours. Or if you want, you can write it down as the typical customer is parked for 4.144 hours. Then the next question is, what is the standard deviation? This is the formula for standard deviation. Okay. Standard deviation is basically each and every random variable, we minus the mean. Here, how to get the mean is this number here. So in other words, to get the standard deviation, we need to find the mean first. Okay, so for each and every value of x, we deduct from the mean. 
Now we square it and then we multiply with the probability of that random variable. Okay, an example, one, one hour minus the mean, square it and then multiply with the probability of one hour plus go on and so forth until we finish eight hours and then um, we square root it so you will get the answer 2.0908 and moving on to the third question find the mean and standard deviation of the amount charged so here let's just go back to our question just now as I mentioned to you before okay um, there are two variables right one is the number of hours the cars are parked Okay, and then here the amount charged. So the question is, to answer this third question, do we need to recalculate the probability? Okay, the answer is no. Okay, we don't have to recalculate the probability that we calculated just now because the frequencies are the same. Okay, it's the same. So these are the probabilities that we can still use. But now instead of focusing on number of hours, we focus on the amount charged. Okay, so let's find the mean. Okay, again, similar similar formula okay each and every um, random variable we multiply with its probability so in here in other words if you look at the table the x now is three ringgit right three, or three dollars and then there's six dollars nine dollars go on and so forth okay so we just multiply with the probabilities attached to it add it up and you get the answer which is 11 ringgit or eleven dollars and 53 cents if you're asked to interpret you can see on average a person pays about $12 or 12 ringgit for parking. Okay, and then to find the standard deviation, again, here's the formula. Each and every random variable, we minus the mean here, square it, and then times the probability that belongs to that random variable, plus, so on and so forth. Once you add it all up, we square root it, and you get the answer, $5.01. Okay, um, so to solve this question, I think you need to just go back and look at the table just now.